How about Arch Manning and the Texas Longhorns? First of all, the game was never really in doubt, but everyone's talking about this because of the injury to Quinn Ewers. A week after Quinn Ewers plays incredible football on the road in the big house against Michigan, he goes out there and he gets hurt. Now, Texas, I always felt like, was very deep this year. It's one of the one of the reasons I felt like they were such an elite team, and in particular after covering covering them live and studying them for that game against Michigan, I was so impressed with their depth. And part of that depth included their backup quarterback. Now, some of that was an assumption. We think that Arch Manning is going to be good, and a lot of that has to do with his last name. But we we haven't really known. He looked good in some spring games and some mop up duty, and we're like, yeah, you know, we think it's good. But this was really the first time that we got to see it, right? Like, see him have the entire offense at his disposal. See him run the offense with Sark being uber aggressive, calling the plays. See him being able to run on the edge. And I tell you what, all that did for me was solidify the fact that I think Texas is one of the best teams in the country. And because I feel like they've done more on the field than anybody else, I put them at number one. So in my latest rankings, Texas goes up to number one. The AP did the exact same thing, so that was... Now, granted, I don't love being the same as the AP, but I'll just tell you, like this is the first time since 2008 that the AP has Texas at number one, and there's my top 10. I have Texas one, Ohio State two. I've got Miami all the way up at three because, listen, if you look at what teams are actually doing on the field, Miami deserves that spot. Tennessee, the same thing. Georgia, with their lackluster performance, would go down to five. Bama, USC, Ole Miss, Penn State, and Oregon. That's how I round out my top 10. But Texas is the one at the top. Texas is a team that, well, let's just face it, in in this season, we think, even though we have not witnessed a season with this new college football playoff and these new deeper conferences, we think it's going to take more depth. I do. I think it's going to take a lot more depth to get through these schedules because in some cases, we might be asking teams to play upwards of 17 football games. That's by far the most that we've ever asked prior. We've seen teams go, remember when it was a thing, it was like, they're the first team that went 15-0. and Well, we might be asking teams to play 17 games. I think it might be even unrealistic to feel like teams are going to go through the season without some injuries. And a lot of them are going to have to deal with injuries at the quarterback position. It's very rare for a team, even great teams, to have to play or get to play every single meaningful snap of their season with their starting quarterback. That's just incredibly rare. So at some point, and by the way, Ewers has a bit of an injury history with Texas. We've seen this before. Obviously got injured a few years ago in that game against Alabama. I thought that Arch was going to have to play. Last year, we we uh, we saw Malik Murphy have to play some meaningful snaps for the Longhorns. And I felt like Arch was going to have to play. This did nothing but solidify the fact that Texas is like, oh, yeah, they're going to be just fine. In fact, you could probably make an argument that Manning might be even more talented than yours, even though yours clearly has the experience edge over Manning. So you can make an argument that they might not miss a beat, even if their starting quarterback goes down. And that's a quarterback that I still believe is going to wind up in New York for the Heisman Trophy uh, ceremony. I mean, dang. Right? Vince Young chiming in on Twitter at Vince Young 10. He says, okay, respect number 16. I see you champ with a little hook'em right there, or the, the horns. I think that Vince threw up the horns like that because what we saw from Manning in particular running the football was something I didn't think he had in him. That was something pretty special. That long run was the longest run by a touchdown run by a Texas quarterback since Vince Young. That's saying something because Colt McCoy was damn good. By the way, and now they've got all these GPS trackers, and you can track exactly how fast these players are running on the field. And can I just tell you, like, if you're running over 20 and a half miles an hour, hitting 21 miles an hour, some guys that are really fast can hit like 22, 22 and a half, maybe even close to 23. Arch basically hit 21 miles an hour on his touchdown run. That blows my mind. Blows my mind. That's like fast, fast, not just. Like regular, like, oh, yeah, he can run. That's like fast, fast. I didn't, I mean, you watch Peyton, like Bambi run around and you didn't think that that was it. I, this team might need him even more in an extended time. And guess what? Sark at this point has got to feel like to himself, like, I'm good. I'm good. We're deep up front. 
We're deep at the defensive line. I've got my wide receiver core. This is just an incredible team, which is why I put them at number one. Now, yours is week to week. It seems like it's not going to be a long-term thing, which means that Sark gets to play this week to week. And guess what? Here's the benefit of the doubt. Sark doesn't have to rush Ewers back. He can make sure that he's completely healthy. They've got ULM, uh, Louisiana Monroe, uh, or uh, yeah, Louisiana Monroe, then Mississippi State, then an off week, then they've got Red River. So they've got all this time to get Ewers healthy if they really feel like they want him back for Red River. And then they've got Georgia the following week. Even if he's not great, like, I'm good. I'm good. Now, I don't believe that this is a quarterback controversy, and I do think that that's where people are going to go, in particular from a narrative standpoint, and in particular there. Because let's face it, a lot of people around Texas love to have an opinion. I'm glad, in this case, that Sark is unwavered by people's opinion about him or his program. This guy is very comfortable in his own skin, and that's going to pay huge dividends for him in this situation. Because there will be noise. Now, every time that Ewers doesn't run around or if he gets sacked or if he struggles for even a quarter against Oklahoma, everyone's going to be like, well, put in Arch. Put in Arch. It's like, hey, bro, man, relax. Just relax. Sark gets to ease into Ewers getting healthy. Then he gets to just evaluate it. He just gets to purely evaluate it. And if Quinn isn't effective, he's got a legitimate option. This is a win-win situation for Steve Sarkeesian if he handles it correctly. Because like I said, the noise can, noise, excuse me, can get pretty loud down there around that program. And if he navigates that, this is a team that certainly is going to be where I expected them to be. Because remember, if you go back to the preseason, who did I have? In the national championship game, the Texas Longhorns. They've done nothing to that expectation except exceed it. Up to this point, they've done everything right. And now we know that they've got depth at the most important position on the field. Five total touchdowns, man. Arch rolling down the field. Rolling. Just one time I would love in my life to feel athletic like that, like, like run. I was not a runner. I was very slow in every sport I played like basketball. I had to be a shooter baseball. I had to be like a power hitter and, and you know, just didn't have the range and everything. I had to have a strong arm quarterback. It's like, yeah, you got to be smart and be cerebral. Just one time I would have loved to, to feel the feeling like I could run away from somebody on the field. That must've been, that must've felt amazing. Arch just, absolutely throttled down to the end zone. Cool to see. Thank you for watching the Joel Class Show YouTube channel. And if you liked this clip, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And you can stay up to date on all of my college football coverage.